Welcome back. Today, I have a life update that ties into a life lesson. I feel like that's kind of the direction that things have been going lately. And I think if I could think of any title for my past two weeks of my life, it would be disappointed, not discouraged. I I suffered a huge disappointment. Um, I shared with you guys that my husband and I are starting our adoption journey. We are certain that uh, it is in our hearts we will be parents. Um, but, you know, it's it's a long road and there are a lot of different avenues. And so let's just dive right into... Um, into the plan. I share a lot of plans with you and a lot of structure with you because that is how I live my life. That's how I thrive and how I function. And um, I am absolutely a work in progress because when plans do not go according to plan, I crumble a little. I, uh, you know, I definitely don't do what I used to. I don't turn to drink or drugs. Um, but there's definitely some ice cream involved, and I did cave and buy a vape. Uh, not super stoked about that. Not the healthiest mechanism, not the healthiest coping mechanism, but proof positive that I am a work in progress, and maybe that's a good opportunity for you to look at yourself and see where you could give yourself a little bit of grace and see where... You know, sometimes we don't live up to our expectations of ourselves. So, um, yeah, we uh, we had a situation where we were going to be able to move forward with, um, you know, with uh, starting to work with an agency, and it was just a matter of funds. And so we were pretty overjoyed that it looked like that was going to be like a piece of our, a big piece of our puzzle that was um, going to just fit nicely. And it kind of paved the way for the rest of the pieces. And I had this perfect plan. I'm going to study and get my life and health insurance license so that I can work from home. Um, so I can get out of the bartending business and, you know, so that I can, you know, my vision of myself as a mother, I would like to be home, you know, work from home and, and parent full time. And, um, yeah, um, uh, just uh, this setback, this wrench that got thrown in, I mean, it, it was the logical thing to happen, you know, when something seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, but it was devastating to me. It was just such a huge blow to this forward motion that I was in. Like I just had this, this gung ho, you know, we're just going for it and I'm trusting in the universe. Not that it's going to provide what is of the highest good for all, but it's going to provide exactly what I've asked for and planned for. And I don't know if you've dealt with the universe or lived in the actual world, but that's not how it works. <laughs> you, you do get what is best, but it's not a straight line and it doesn't usually turn out the way you expect it to. I have my little sign in the office here. God has a vision far greater than my sight. And I need to read that often because, you know, I just start thinking that I know best and I just trust that I'm going to get what I want, when I want it, how I want it. And that is pretty much never the case because I don't know what God's plan is for me. I just, I know what I need to do on my end from day to day to stay 
um, connected and to stay grounded. And I have not been doing those things, by the way. I have not meditated. I have not grounded myself. And I've actually avoided it. I've avoided coming into my office. I've avoided reading my sign. I've avoided my journal. I've avoided my yoga mat. Like every single thing that I do that makes me feel good, I have completely avoided. Now, in my defense, it is spring break on the beach. We live on the South Texas coast and I am a bartender. I work at a resort and it is going down. Like it's crazy out there. So I'm, you know, I'm working 10 to 12 hour days. And so I need to give myself a break, a big break. And just go with the flow. Just be where I'm at. Um, but the analogy that I can think of uh, for what is happening in my life. Like if I, if I just picture myself, I'm flowing down the river of life. Like this is, you know, God is the river. I'm in a boat. God is the boat. And I am, you know, flowing into not, not huge raging rapids, but I'm flowing into some choppy water and instead of trusting the boat and trusting the current, I've got my little oars and I'm turning the other way and I'm paddling against this current. Um, I'm trying to fight what is. <clears throat> and when I do that, I suffer, but only 100% of the time. So what's happening in life isn't the problem. It's my thoughts and my feelings about what is happening in life because things didn't go the way that I wanted them to. And it would have been so much easier, but obviously that wasn't the way for us. You know, obviously we were being protected and directed in the way that we're supposed to go and the child that we are supposed to, we're supposed to, you know, meet and have and love and, the path that I wanted to go on wasn't leading there. So I know these things in my mind. I always say I know, but I don't know. Like I don't feel it in my heart and in my being. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Um, so disappointed, yes, but discouraged, absolutely not. Um, I absolutely know that we will be parents, both in my mind and my heart. <sighs> but this is just another growth opportunity. This is another opportunity to, you know, to grow and to um, overcome and to stay determined and, you know, eventually positive in the face of disappointment and adversity. <clears throat> So how do you handle setbacks? Like, are you able to just go with the flow and let it just kind of flow off you and have like the, it is what it is mentality? Do you live in equanimity and just know that everything is perfect? And so you just sit back. I mean, that's, that's the ideal. That's where I would like to be, but I just, uh, I'm experiencing a not so gentle reminder that I have not yet arrived at that space. And it's been really tough accepting where I'm at because I feel like I should be better because I know better and because I preach better and I teach better. And it's a, it's a whole different ball game when you're in the thick of it. So I do always tell people like the best thing about a breakdown, and I'm not saying I had like a mental or emotional breakdown, but I definitely just got shaken up completely um, and everything is thrown off. Like I said, I mean, practice out the window, <clears throat> really hard time just connecting uh, with spirit and with myself and um hard to connect with my breath or even with my thoughts. I just am moving nonstop, um, just trying to keep up kind of doggy paddling here. <clears throat> but the 
breakthroughs that come after breakdowns, like going through such a hard time and then having survived that, like the obstacle is the way, like the only way to get, like to get over something is to go through it. Like I can't get around it and I can't get over it. I got to get through. It. And I'm absolutely doing that. I am getting through. And I know that everything is exactly as it should be. I know that. Am I always okay with the fact that <laughs> the way that it is, is the way that it's supposed to be? Um, sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes I'm absolutely fighting reality. And so um, I just wanted to get vulnerable with you on here today and just kind of share what I'm experiencing in hopes that maybe it helps you look at a situation that you're experiencing or have experienced or will experience through a different light, because I'm really working on giving myself grace. And by that, I mean, just give yourself a break. I mean, if I would not treat anyone else the way I tre I'm treating myself while I go through a difficult emotional thing. You know, anyone else I would encourage to just feel their feelings and take their time and get back to what they do when they're able to and not beat themselves up for missing a week on the podcast and for not taking time to meditate and just getting by. Sometimes you just got to get by. You know, sometimes you just got to get through the motions. Um, and I do feel like I'm doing better than that. I'm, you know, I am, um, I am, um, still, you know, making meals and I'm feeding myself and I'm taking care of myself. And like I mentioned before, you know, there's no, uh, there's no danger of any kind of drugs or alcohol. And that is a completely different world than, you know, three and a half years ago. <clears throat> it's just not, uh, it's not an option. It's not for me. And so I'm very thankful for that. Um, I have been taking time to watch the sky. You know, I'm working outside and I, for a couple days, wasn't even noticing like the beautiful things. I wasn't paying attention to the birds and the bunnies and the waves and the fact that I'm working right next to the ocean and I can hear the waves crashing. And the one morning that I did, <laughs> I did um, try to leave a little bit early so that I could get to the beach because I do usually go to the beach every morning before I start my shift. I was doing quite a bit over the speed limit and it's spring break and I contributed to uh, the ticket quota. So that's a big bummer. Um, but it, it was a good reminder that I'm usually in a hurry and I need to slow down a little. So, um, yeah. So I, I did, um, I did come across something that really spoke to me in the hard time that I'm experiencing. And it says, give up faith in the ways of the world, embrace the world of spirit unconditionally. And that really spoke to me because when you live a faith-based life, when you live relying on spirit, then you don't worry about the traffic and you don't worry about the hurry and you don't worry about, you know, the, the bills. I mean, you get them paid, but you just, you're frying bigger fish, you know, you're just trusting and it's, uh, it's a comfort and it's a joy and it's, it's just a different way to live. And when I read that and I saw that and it said unconditionally, I was just reminded of what it feels like to not rely on just my own self-will and my own hard head and 
to just trust in spirit, to just trust that I am being guided and that any setback, any detour is a detour in the right direction. Or, you know, when God closes a door, he opens a window. However you want to word that for it to fit your situation, um, I have found it to be 100% true, 100% of the time. Oh, and then I also read, ditch the drug of doubt. Does that ring true for you? Like, it is so addicting to doubt, to doubt the universe, to doubt the plan, to doubt humanity, just, oh, to doubt the goodness of people, or gosh, doubt ourselves. I mean, it's addicting. Like, it's so easy to doubt. But I've said this before, we have just as much evidence in, on the side of positive as we do on the side of negative. So we get to choose. I have not been choosing the positive, but I am choosing to turn that around. <laughs> uh, doubt undermines your confidence and sends you seeking approval before making decisions. And it absolutely does. Doubting yourself undermines your confidence. And then when you're seeking that approval, you're robbing yourself of your power and of your connection and your guidance. You know, because you need someone else to verify what you're doing and to verify your choices and your processes. And if we just get quiet, we know. Wayne Dyer says, we're just being done. We're actually not doing anything. We could actually just sit back and just be done. And he uses the example, and I love this example. When you came to earth and you were growing inside your mom, you were being formed and... You know, you were starting to pop out with like fingers and toes and, you know, eventually your eyes came in and, you know, you never like, you know, in the womb, never got the awareness to go, oh no, I don't have a nose. What if I never get a nose? Like that just, that wasn't a part of it. You just were being done in the perfect harmony that is existence. And then you come out and then you take over <laughs> and uh, you actually don't, don't have to because you're still being done and I'm still being done. I'm still completely guided. I am still completely on the path and this is part of the path. This is, you know, part of guess just remembering my humanness and practicing grace and maybe a little forgiveness and a little bit of yeah be a lot of forgiveness there's just there's so many lessons to learn in each painful experience but it's all perfect I have every right to have confidence in myself and I have every reason to trust in spirit so I'm gonna choose to do that and I have every intention to keep showing up on Wednesdays at 5 a.m uh wherever you get your podcasts So I hope that helped. It helped me. I needed to get a little bit vulnerable and bring some awareness to how I'm feeling and what I kind of have been experiencing. Because um, awareness is where it's at. Like once we become aware of what's really going on with us, I mean, the the solution is there. Um, I already know the answer or the lack thereof. You know, I don't, 
I don't need anything to be done. I just need to get okay with being okay. So if you're struggling, I just want you to know that you are absolutely going to get through this. Nothing is permanent. You know, good times, bad times, they all last forever. And this is the only now that you will get. So dig deep and find it, find it in yourself to choose your own joy, choose your own happiness, and don't let discouragement turn into, uh, don't let like disappointment turn into discouragement, you know, don't give up whatever you're working on. Um, we all have a purpose. We all have music in us that needs to be played. So whatever your music is, find it and play it and play it loud. I love you guys and thank you for stopping by. I will talk to you next Wednesday.